Bio 2. We're going to start our new chapter today and style chapter 28 and start our arthropods and echinoderms. So these are the names of our next two groups of invertebrate animals that we are going to discuss. So if you don't know what either one of those are, we're going to get into what their groups, what they make, <clears throat> what make these groups up here within our next couple videos. So here we'll go ahead and start with our first section in chapter 28 and it's called the introduction to the arthropod. So it's going to give us a look at what in fact an arthropod is. And so we have to look at, in order to understand what an arthropod is, we have to know what are its main features. So arthropods have the main features of a segmented body, they have a tough exoskeleton, and they have what are known as jointed appendages. So those are three big things you're going to need to know about this group. Our examples of our arthropods include insects, crabs, centipedes, and spiders, just to name a few because this group has more organisms than any other animal group on the world today. So that's just kind of a small sampling of what you can expect to see within our arthropods. In arthropods, they're surrounded by a tough external covering that's known as an exoskeleton. So it's a skeleton that is outside of their body, so it's an exoskeleton. And the exoskeleton is made from protein and a carbohydrate known as chitin. If you remember, chitin was also found in the cell walls of our fungi going way back when, just kind of bringing everything full circle here. There are some, seeing how everything's related. So the exoskeleton is an important word you're going to need to know as well. And arthropods actually have jointed appendages. Appendages, sorry, so you're also going to need to know that. And an appendage is any structure that extends from the body wall. And so an example would be legs and an antenna are appendages. So their legs come out from their body, they extend from their body wall, as well as antenna do as well. So they have jointed legs and they have jointed uh, antenna, collectively makes it jointed appendages. And so we're going to look at now what are some of the important trends in arthropod evolution. So why, how did arthropods evolve? How did they become what they are today? And a typical primitive arthropod was composed of many identical segments and each carried a pair of appendages. So if you look on the right, you can definitely see right there in the middle is the appendages, or the, not the appendages, the segments. And if you look off to the left, those little individual pieces coming off are those are all different, uh, different appendages or different legs coming off of our segments. So there's multiple segments, multiple appendages found in our early uh, arthropods, and this is an arthropod that is known as a trilobite. And this early body, body plan was modified gradually, meaning it changed over a long period of time, and body segments were lost or fused together over time. So over the course of millions of years, the body segments either fell off or fused together just so there was not so many numerous body segments in our arthropods that we have today. And the evolution of arthropods, again, has led to fewer body segments, so which what we just said, and highly specialized appendages for feeding, movement, and other functions. So instead of having a ton of appendages, they have very specific number of appendages that can all do a certain job in helping them feed, move, and as other functions as well. And those other functions that we are going to discuss are going to come up right now because we're going to look at our form and our function in our arthropods, so how they carry out all their daily essential functions. And arthropods will use complex organ systems to carry out different essential functions. And these organ systems are all interrelated, meaning they all depend on each other, which it just says that's what that next part says. The functioning of one system depends on that of other systems. So in order for the circulatory system to run right, the nervous system has to be doing its job as well. So there's interrelated organ systems found in our arthropods. And in order to feed, they kind of fill, they kind of run a wide range. They basically have every possible uh, feeding technique is found in this group because there's herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores, as well as filter feeders, detrivores, and parasites. So all basically all of our different types of feeding types are found in this group. And then so since there's so many different types of feeding, the mouth parts of the arthropods are going to be adapted to the type of food that that specific arthropod eats. So every single one is going to have a different type of mouth depending on the type of food that it eats. And so for respiration, again, our breathing, uh, most terrestrial arthropods are going to breathe through a network of branching tracheal tubes that extend throughout the body. So tracheal tubes are how arthropods are going to breathe, and they're tubes that kind of extend throughout the length of their body. And how these all function, again, work together with other parts of their body 
is that air enters and leaves the tracheal tubes through what are known as spiracles, and these are small openings that are located along the side of the body. So they have small openings on the sides of their body that allows the air to come in, again, through the tracheal tubes, and that's how they breathe. So they almost, they don't really take a deep breath like we do. They just let air pass through holes in their side, and that is how they breathe. And there are different other terrestrial arthropods, again, terrestrial meaning you live on land, such as spiders that will respire using what are known as book lungs. And book lungs are organs that have layers of respiratory tissue stacked like pages of a book. So a book lung helps them breathe, and the reasons why they're called a book lung is because they're stacked up on each other, and it almost looks like different books. And most aquatic arthropods, such as lobsters, like the one we have in the tank, and crabs, will respire through what are known as feather, or through feather-like gills. And remember, gills are just the gas or, or the organs that help gas exchange occur underwater. And horseshoe crabs, which is another kind of cool example that we'll take a look at, they respire through book gills. So book gill, similar to a book lung, except it's just going to be uh, for underwater instead of above water. So that's it for our first part of chapter 28. Let me know if you have any questions.